Okay, these are my settings. Let's go for another take. And let's go up here and hit start. Okay, let me just gather my thoughts. Holy shit, that fucking worked. All right, let me just grab this. All right, I'm trying not to burn myself here. All right, that is the flange we've just cut out. I can't remember the top, okay, that's the back. There's a little bit of dross as they call it. Look at those holes. I mean, okay, this, this is not even fine tuned yet. This is just, wow. I have no words. This is awesome. I need to go and just measure everything, but first cut, first glance, I am stoked. That is just one hell of a relief. Oh man, all right, there it is. This thing worked perfectly. Yeah, it's Rusty from Rusty's Metal Cut Signs and Designs. And welcome to part six, and it's the final of the six part series on how to build a plasma cutting table. And as you've just seen in that um, intro, we've cut our first piece, uh, that little flange that you saw. Um, here it is here. Uh, yeah, I was pretty excited when, when we finally got it to cut something. I'd just like to run through where we've come from and how we got to actually be cutting this, this flange out. Well, back in part one, we discussed what, a, what plasma was and what a CNC plasma cutting table was all about. And in um, part two, we looked at the electronics, the controller module, the laptop that we had the software on, the stepper driver units connected to the stepper driver motors, and we watched them turn around in response to following the toolpath in the software. And then in part three, we looked at the X, Y, and Z uh, components, the, the linear rails with the bearings on them, the ball screws with the ball nuts and how they moved up and down. And then we looked in part four, we looked at the actual design of the table and the construction, how I put that, this whole frame together and sat it on the, on the, um, on the support table. And then in part five, we had the uh, pen sitting on the torch mount and we ran around on some paper and we drew some shapes in response to what we had on the software and then we were able just to measure those and get the sizing and make sure everything was working right. So that leads us to, to part six and I appreciate you being here along the way. I know it's been a, a fair journey. Um, and then to get to this point now, we've actually started cutting things with it. It's, it's, a, it's a big achievement. So I just want to show you a few things on the, uh, on the table and, and show you some of the electronics and show you how we've connected into the plasma cutter itself. And I'll just show you those now. Now on the uh, Razor Cut 45, there is this plug, and I'll just pull the plug off and show you now. This is what they call a CNC port. And this has an arrangement of pins that are connected to the circuit board inside. This plug connects back to the plasma interface unit, which is in the, in the control panel which is in the electronics board, and you've seen that before. Sorry about the light. That's the uh, plasma interface unit here. So we've got our torch on off. We've got our uh, voltage, our arc voltage, which is the measurement across the torch and the ground. And we've also got our ohmic sensor in here as well. So with relation to this plug, which we've got in here the two pins to turn the torch on and off, and we've also got the pins that measure the arc voltage. 
plasma cutter has already got that CNC port. We just had to buy the plug and run the cable and, and that's as simple as it really was. Now this is the torch holder that I made and you remember in the earlier tests I had a plate up here with a felt pen on it. What I've done is I've used the same bolt pattern. A little tab there is for the homing sensor switch and what I've used is a piece of pipe machined out the inside diameter is equal to this um, to the dimension of the torch i've split it and put a locking bolt in here as you can see and i've used come around this side this is the initial standoff plate sorry this is the original standoff guide that fitted on the uh not on the torch and what it did was it actually those two fingers kept the nozzle three millimeters above the metal so that must have been the the cutting height so what i've done is i've filed three millimeters off here and i've attached come around this side i've attached a wire to the hose clamp here which just holds that the standoff guide holds that in place this comes up here wired into the separate cable i ran for the omic sensor and it runs around and it's connected into here to the ohmic sensor. Now, well, I'll just show you how this works. Sorry about the um, oh, horrible looking screen. Uh, must be the light on it. All right, you're not gonna be able to see this, but if I go to this Z axis, this, this one here, this Z axis initial height test, apologies for my ugly face, uh, ugly body in the background. If I hit that, you'll see the torch goes down and comes back up again. Now it came back up to 9.99 millimeters, which down here is the piercing height is set to 10. So it's, it's gone down to the metal, real, sensed the circuit between the little fingers and the um, ground connector, and it said, yep, I'm happy with that. So I'll just run that through again, I'll show you what the torch does. So every time the program goes through a cut and then it lifts up the torch and moves across to another part of the cut tool path and then as it comes back down again, it'll, it'll do this same process. It'll come down, touch the material, back off to the pierce height and then it should tell the torch to turn on. And that's our next step is we're going to test the um, plasma cutter and actually see if this thing will fire the, the arc and actually start and do a cut. So getting a bit excited now. Now the plasma cutting operation requires compressed air and I've got a 10 CFM air compressor here and this supplies air to the cutter and, and Unimig who sell the uh, Razor World 45 recommend an air inlet filter prior to the cutter and I'll just show you that. Now Unimig recommend these AT1000 or motor guard filters and some people call them <laughs> toilet roll filter because when you take them apart the filter inside looks like a toilet roll and the idea of this is is to trap the moisture before it gets into the plasma cutter because the worst thing you can have in your plasma cutting uh, torch is, is moisture of any sort and this is unregulated air coming in because the regulator for the cutter is actually inside the, the plasma cutter. And before you do any cutting at all, always make sure that your earth clamp is securely attached to the, uh, the workpiece and make sure it's connected to the piece that's on the table that's going to be left behind, not the piece you're actually cutting out. Because without that, you could cause damage because the return path for your plasma cutter is trying to get back to the machine and you don't want it to short out through your electronics, which, which can happen. Well, I've laid a piece of 1.6 mil steel plate. Uh, this is a 16 gauge. I just cut a 600 mil piece off the, off, the, off the full sheet. I just got it clamped. I don't have a water table at the moment. Um, I just aligned it up. I'm gonna cut a flange, which was actually the flange I, I showed in, uh, I think part two when we did the software. Now, sorry about my ugly reflection in here. Hopefully you can see that. We're ready to go. I don't know if it's going to cut, but we're going to go and start and see what actually happens. Oh. <laughs> 
All right, take one, that was a mistake. I didn't even turn the plasma cutter on. Now, apologies for the noise, the plasma cutter is turned on. Uh, internal pressure regulator sets it to 75 PSI, I can't change that. 2T, um, I'm not quite sure what that one is. I think that's the normal torch setting. I've got it on 26, 27 amps. Um, the compressor is full. The compressor is actually not on at the moment. I've just filled the tank. I'm just going to make a lot of noise. Right, let's try that again. So that's the complete system as you've seen. Um, I guess when I undertook this project, I, it wasn't too daunting. It was a case of I've never worked with plasma before. I didn't really understand what CNC was. But I guess this series of videos is a way of giving back to the YouTube community because I got a lot of information from YouTube in terms of you know how, how to build something like this. So. If these videos have helped you, I, I hope that you can be inspired to go and build your own table based on not only my videos, but other people's videos as well that, that are informative and, and give you some, um, some inspiration, I guess, and give you some guidance on how to put these things together. So I'd just like to wrap this video up. As you can tell, I don't mean to get emotional. As you can tell, when I cut that first flange, I was pretty excited. I was pretty excited to see it, to cut that first thing, and, and it was like a, everything I worked towards to get this thing to do, it, it did exactly what I thought it was going to do. So, so that was, that was pretty, pretty good. There's some people I need to thank on this, on this project. First of all, Mrs. Rusty. Now, I come to her with this crazy idea, and I said, look, I've got a plasma cutter, and I, I want to cut some aluminium with it, because that's why I bought it, um, mainly. Um, and now I think I'd like to build, or buy, first of all, I wanted to buy a table. I, I wanted to buy a, a, a plasma cutting table from the USA. And by the time I was to buy it and get it shipped here, it was going to cost me a fair bit of money. And I said to her, look, I reckon I could build one of these. So I thought she would have kicked up a stink and went, whoa, I'm not spending that sort of money. Anyway, I, 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 I thank her for her for her support and she said if that's what you want to do well yeah go ahead and build it so I, I thank her for that um, now John John's an electrical engineering friend of mine and he was excited about the project as I was and he and I've spent some time talking about it and, and, and discussing some of the electronics and some of how we might wire things up and, and yeah his support's been, been greatly appreciated um, Jason <laughs> Jason's a guy I hadn't met until I met him on one of the plasma forums and such a hell of a nice guy I, I really appreciate you being there to help me and you did say I think you you might regret this but you said if you need a hand sing out so I've been bombarding poor Jason with 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 questions and you know when we started cutting a few photos and and he was giving me settings and how to do this and how to do that and and yeah thank you I can't thank you enough um Kyle Kyle's another one of those guys I hadn't met before until I met on, on, on the Plasma Forum. And yeah, he's been a great help, you know, with assistance with just general things, just, just talking plasma tables in general and, and how to do things. And, and uh, yeah, so 
uh, and there's been some other people, some of the family and, and, and some of the friends of mine have, who have encouraged me to build this. They didn't sort of go, oh, what are you doing? You can't build that. It, yeah, it, it, it's been very helpful. So I hope if you start to build your own table that you have people around you and they're able to help you with it. And look, if you need a hand, if someone, someone out there in, in plasma table land has got some questions, you know, get in contact. I'm, I'm certainly happy to help you um, as I've had people help me. All right, so that's it for, for this series. That's it for, for the plasma table build. So in the future, I'll show you some of the projects that we, we cut on the table as we do it. I've, I've got a list of things already in front of me that I need to do. Uh, two more things they do to the table, as you notice, it hasn't got a water, water table in here yet. That's actually being fabricated right now because the fumes and sparks and smoke that comes off this thing is not good for your health. Uh, trust me, even that, in the intro video you saw it cutting, there's a lot of fumes coming off. We need a water table in here and we'll catch all that. So that, that's, that's been done as we speak. The electrical cabinet, I think I mentioned in the previous video, the electrical cabinet is a little bit small and I've, I've now got my new electrical cabinet. It's a 500 by, 500 by 250 deep panel. Um, it's got a gland plate in the bottom. We're actually going to make a little, a little, I guess you'd call it a little console. And the cables coming off the side cable tray are actually long enough to mount that box on the little console. I'm going to have a laptop and a screen right up in this front corner here because there's nothing worse than sitting on the table. You can't see where the torch is. So it's just a little thing I'm going to have up here. So um, that's, that's another little thing to do as well. Um, but other than that, again, I thank you so much for, for your support and your comments and questions you've had along the way. If you have any more about what we're doing, please put them in the comments below. I'll certainly get to them and answer all your questions. So if you like the video, a thumbs up would be appreciated. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, the um, subscribe button's down here. And if you haven't seen the, the previous five videos in the series, I'll put a link up here somewhere to them. And, and if you get a chance to go and watch them, uh, please do so. All right. So that's the end of this series. And thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.